I wonder what they're like. From our viewpoint, Professor, they're either suprahuman or subhuman. Twitchiverse or YouTubeiverse, respectively, depending on how you're viewing this. Either way, hi. It is Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's right after Memorial Day. If you're watching this live, you'd already know that. We are playing some midweek magic, historic pauper, because it's pauper. We love it. We love it. Disco Computer loves it. So you know it's good. That's how that works. So we're going to play some Historic Pauper. Before we jump right in, I want to show you all the deck I've been brewing with, which is this Value Town deck. It is a red-white deck. My concept behind it is I want to try to do what the Boros decks do in actual Pauper. Not quite as effectively. Obviously, we're missing things, right? We're missing Battle Screech. We're missing uh, like our Glint Hawk pickup engine, but we do have that style. We have Prophetic Prism. We now have the Inspiring Overseer from Streets of New Capenna. We have the Experimental Synthesizer. We have Thraven Inspector, which is already in that deck. So I'm trying to kind of make this a long game deck that can win over the course of a longer game with different cards and different options. So we have Dawn, Dawnbringer Cleric in the main board. We have a singular Ray of Revelation in the main board. I have the Prophetic Prism so I can flash it back if I need to. So there's a few little neat interactions here. A ton of cheap removal in the deck. I don't know if this is going to be good. I don't know if this deck is going to be terrible, but we are going to find out together. I do have a single guiding voice for long games, so I do have some lessons in the board as well. So... Very interested to see. In my testing, it seemed to run pretty cohesively, and I won with a lot of backup spells in my hand. So I had no problem cycling through the deck and being able to kind of make the most of what I had. So I'm hoping this deck works pretty well for this. I also have a Suey Black deck I'm looking to test tonight. Tons of good stuff. Always lots of fun when Pauper comes around. I always have lots of stuff queued up because, you know, it's Pauper, and I love playing the Pauper. So we'll make changes as the night goes on too if we need to. We'll do a bunch of stuff with this deck to start things off. And that will kind of be the crux of our YouTube video. So let us know in the comments if you like this or you don't like this and you never want to see it again. That's important for us to know or else we'll keep doing it, right? We're going to do it unless you tell us otherwise. So do that if you must. This hand is super sketchy, but I think on the play it's fine enough. We can Spirited Companion on two, hopefully draw our land and Overseer on three pretty well. Synthesizer can sit, but that's fine. This really, it's a one mana, one mana play, but it's not really a one mana play we're looking to make quickly. Well, that was an effective one. That hand was so good that our opponent scooped. <laughs> So that's pretty awesome. But the Synthesizer, while it is a one mana card, you generally don't want to play it till later. It has an awesome interaction with Core Skyfisher because the Skyfisher picks it up and lets you then get the, when you pick it back up, you also get the Leaves the Battlefield trigger on the Synthesizer. So it's really, really good. Um, I'm not sure the right number right now. I have our opponent's name is great. It's either L or Eel, which I prefer <laughs> to say that way. This hand's different, right? It's in the opposite direction. I still think it's worth keeping. Um, I think Thrill of Possibility can get us out of a little bit of a land glut. It's one of the cards that's in the deck and designed to do that. Same with the Voldaren, uh, whatever the heck it's called. It's two Frostbites, we can deal with any early game aggression. We can Thrill of Possibility to sculpt our hand better. So, we'll see what we have. What in the world does this do? Okay, this looks like an aggro deck we're up against. So I have the potential i could core skyfisher and pick up a land that seems pretty soft to me 
I think we'll just hold. If all they're going to do is Dust Wielder and activate Dust Wielder, I am fine losing life and gain them gaining a life. So Black Green could be like an Aristocrats deck. Booty Nips. I'm still fine with that. Dust Wielder will not boast here. We'll just take one damage, and I think we're going to just throw away a, an extra land here. We'll get rid of planes considering the double frostbite in hand. That we have more white cards. It's a tough call. I think I'll do mountain. Okay, cool. That that worked out. All right, fair enough. I can live with that. So you can kind of see the power of the deck. We have a couple options here. We can spirited companion that doesn't so much block the dusk wielder, but neither does Thraven Inspector very well. So they both kind of trade. So I think we want a Spirited. We could conversely course Sky Thraven Inspector, Core Skyfisher, pick it up. But I think we just want a Spirited Companion, leave up Frostbite is my thought here. We'll block the Boot Nipper. That would have them make the first move if they have a combat trick, and we can kind of blow them out a little bit. Potentially, drew our Singleton Ardent Elementalist. I feel like this card's very good. Uh, four mana for this effect is the first time we've had it at that low of a rate. So pretty cool, pretty cool. It's in red. So I'm very interested to see how this works. Obviously, picking this up with the core Skyfisher is very powerful. So this game has a, a good late game engine, as well as a lot of value in the early game. Like, as you can see, I'm not really super worried about the opponent's early game aggression. Like, that's fine. Like, they can hit me. No problem. I'm interested to see what they do in their second main phase here. Looks like they're going to boast. Hovering the Dusk Wielder. Oh, they're going for a Vampire Opportunity. So a very aggressive deck here. Are they going to boast? Okay, they're going to boast. Um, yeah, let's frostbite out the, the opportunist. And now resolve. Play out our mountain. I don't think we want to thrill here. I don't necessarily know if we want to core skyfisher. It's a pretty va pretty powerful engine to pick up that companion and recast it. It puts us it puts us with the best creature on the board, and the companion can trade with the boot nipper at that point. That's a pretty good line. We could just Elementalist back our Frostbite. I feel like we can do that all in one turn, though. I do, I'm do. i kind of interested in this game where it looks like they're going to be playing a bunch of cheap creatures to maximize my Frostbites. So maybe we Thraben? No, I'm just going to... I'm going to score Core Skyfisher and see if we can draw another one down the line. We'll pick up our Spirited Companion and recast it. Draws us a card, replaces itself, potentially gives us... If we go land-to-land, -land, we don't. We strangle, which is great. Great in this matchup. We strangle this. Strangle does 3 damage to target creature or Planeswalker. So in this format, 3 damage to target creature, but it's a single red mana. Frostbite does the same thing at instant speed, so long as you have 3 snow permanents out, which all our, our land base is entirely snow, okay. minus a cycling land in each color. Because I'm still not sure of the exact mana composition yet, or the land composition for the deck yet, so we'll learn together. Opponent looks like they're playing an infinitely fair deck, so I feel like that puts us at a pretty strong advantage. Yeah, this is a very fair deck the opponent's on here. So they could be up, sh up to shenanigans. I don't know everything there is to know about Pauper, right? Like, we definitely have been covering the format since it exi since it's existed. Obviously, check out our videos below if you're on YouTube. If not, go over to our YouTube. It's youtube.com slash superliminalfilms. So I think we could Prism. We could Thraven Inspector. I think the answer is probably just attack with this core, this core of Skyfisher here to start out. Probably go into the Prophetic Prism. Then we could follow up with Thraven and leave up Frostbite. Seems pretty reasonable to me. Hoping to draw a land, of course. Good. We definitely want to make our land drops here if possible. We could Thrill. I don't know as though I want to throw anything away from this hand, so I still think we're just going to go ahead and we're going to Thraven here. We'll leave up our mana to Clue, Token, Frostbite, Thrill, Possibility, whatever we want. We have a plethora of things we can do. So I'm not super worried here. And you can see how much value this deck can generate over the course of a long game. What I'm worried about against this deck is the unfair decks. Uh, sure. Yeah, you got it. We can pick it up with another Core Skyfisher if we find it. Um, I'm worried about the unfair decks. I'm worried about the Ancestral Mask deck in particular. I'm worried about the Mogwort style deck because I don't have anything that exiles. So at that those seem like very hard fights for this deck to win, and those are both decks that don't mind going into a late game. So against a fair deck or a deck that's just built on tempo, I feel like this deck can very easily win, but I don't know how it's going to do against the more unfair decks of the format. 
Or lose a life. You got it. Okay. Planes, I think, is fine. As much as the mana curve is low in this deck, this deck is very mana hungry. So we want to use up our mana basically every turn. So like this turn, we could Arden Elementalist get back said strangle, right? And then re-strangle if we want to. Um, I'm not 100% sure what we want to do. I'm thinking about maybe throwing away this Epicure. It's not doing a whole lot for us. I think we just attack again with Core Skyfisher. Um, yeah, I guess we Elementalist here. We'll get our Frostbite back and hold that up. It's just so good against these creature decks that like I'm not really sure how they're going to win. Again, they could be doing something unfair. I don't, I'm not saying this at least gives me a chance to interact if that unfair synergy happens with a creature. I at least get a chance to interact here. So I don't have to go completely shields down. Arden Elemental is not great stats on this board, and now I have like my core Skyfishers wanting to do overtime by picking up the other core Skyfisher with the Calling Torment and the Arden Elementalist. Uh, Blood Pact's fine. Should be playing the one that adamants to make a food for boating fruit. That's just a better option than that. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We haven't seen them gain life. The Dusk Wheeler gains them life. They didn't give the Boot Nipper life link. We do want to frostbite something end of turn. I think it's probably just the Researcher because it's just the best card in the late game. That I might throw away. That feels like can be thrown away. Let's do that pre-combat and see what options we have. A tap land here just doesn't look good. Okay, perfect. We'll pick up our other core Skyfisher. Should have attacked first. Where were you on that one? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's fine. We'll pick up Elementalist with this one. And we'll play this as a tap land. Because, again, as you can see, I just am constantly using my mana every turn. While all the while the mana curve is fairly low, I'm very good at using the mana in this deck. Well, the deck is designed to use its mana well. I'm not very good at it, as evidenced by the fact I missed that point of damage. That's all right. We're learning. Yeah, you tell me why I missed that, of all people. Right. I would probably do the same thing. I mean, you're worried about the, the you're worried about the game. I'm worried about the game from a long term perspective, but it's important when you're analyzing to analyze all of the information and not just get ahead of yourself, which is easy to do, especially when you're when you're learning a new deck when you're playing the game early on. So are all easy mistakes to make. But that's why Pauper is such a great format. It teaches you the fundamentals of both building a cool constructed deck and learning how to mulligan and things like that for a constructed format, and it teaches you how important a point of damage is. What the heck does this do? And why did you tap out to let me just do that? <laughs> okay. I mean, this was scripted. They knew we had this in hand. Let's just get the free two for one. We just play out three in here. Okay, <laughs> that was bizarre. They let us do that. I mean, they didn't know. Obviously, we're holding a second one. But okay, three two gains them life. So like black green gains life with advantages from eternal thirst and things like that. Blood researcher. It's a cool cool idea. I just don't know if it's good enough. Yeah, that away. No, I don't think I care. It's three two. It has to tap to attack. I have plenty of like I can throw two thraven inspectors on it. and It trades for one like don't really care and that's what i mean when i say this really helps you also this format helps you understand the fundamentals of limited as well as constructed it's a really cool format if you're not playing it i can't recommend it highly enough um is this reach no so we just get in our damage here i don't know as though i'm ready to throw the elementalist away yet I think they probably just trade it for boot nipper and i'm not super sure i'm worried about that yet when i can get value out of core skyfisher by picking it back up mm -hmm. okay let's epic here here no 
We could crack a clue for... Oh, we'll Epicure first. Let's just hold Frostbite and crack a clue here and cycle our blood token. I will cycle a blood token to start. Because I could... If I draw another land, there's reasonable odds that I'd want to play it. Potentially. I'm debating it. Dawnbringer Cleric. None of these are enchantment creatures, right? No. What's the third thing it does? Uh, exiles a card from a graveyard. So it actually does like quite a bit in this deck. And that's one of the things I was looking at. Should we maybe exile the... the um, exact the, this thing. Spectre of the Fens. Or this Opportunist. Because that's pretty good if they get the creature back. I think we kind of want to. This guy's just a good little role player. Good against every kind of deck for the most part. Want to get rid of Spectre of the Fens. And we can pick it up with Core Sky Fisher and recast it down the line if we need to. This lets us hold up Frostbite as well. Again, using all almost all of our mana here. Yep. Yeah, it was that was gonna be a hard board for them to come back from. Well, next turn, we draw a card to start off, so we're just drawing more cards, and we kind of have them beat in every metric. But again, I think this deck is reasonably strong against a fair deck. I don't know how we're going to do against... Like, you see, I have the Dawnbringer Bringer Cleric in there, that and the Ray of Revelation are both concessions to Ancestral Mask. Because that is a, uh, a very, very good magic card, and a very good magic deck in Pauper. So it's worth keeping on your mind. But we get more action here. I don't see it, see the need to make any changes as of yet. I'd like to do my testing. I don't. I want to test more than one game, right? There's nothing that looked really shabby in there. This hand looks like it should be a mulligan to me. This is we can frostbite and debray, but we're not making any forward progress with our white cards. I just don't know. Opponents on the mulligan as well. Yeah, I guess I'm fine mulliganing. Yeah, this is better. What do we put back? Probably Overseer. Could be Guiding Voice. It's very slow in this in this hand. Though putting a counter on Course Sky Fisher is good. I think we probably just put back Guiding Voice. Though Guiding Voice could get us Environmental Sciences if we don't make our land drop. Yeah, I think we get rid of the Overseer, unfortunately. It's just the most expensive card in our hand. We can literally cast everything in our hand now. Put it on Cool Mountain. couple of braids in the deck too just as again a concession to destroy artifacts that flexibility i think is what kind of this deck thrives on i don't know as though this deck should be three colors i thought about that a lot uh when i was working on its construction festival crasher huh i don't want them to get the front foot on me with the mm -hmm. festival crasher sucks that i have to use it there but I'd rather not like wait for them to spin up and then give the, give it a random plus three plus two. Yeah, but land here helps. All right, so now we can Epicure. I have a Chump Blocker, and I can course I can uh, Spirited Companion as well. Cool. Okay. We do need more removal. That is for sure. Debatable if I should block there or just kind of let him go nuts on two land. But I think it's worth the consideration of blocking there. Okay, so now we have the question of do we core Skyfisher pick up the companion? I can't recast the companion mm. if I do that. I can synthesize her first, and that's what I'm leaning towards to try to draw a land here. Any untapped land would do. I said untapped land. Okay. I do think we core Sky Fisher. I think we pick up the Companion. It means we kind of are resigning this Sky Fisher to blocking the Kiln Fiend. If the opponent gives us that ability. We'll see. This is going to be a tough one. This is very borderline on the fair versus unfair match I was talking about. At least this way, if it's a plus three, plus two effect, it has to go on the Kiln Fiend, so the Crasher just hits us for three. 
Yep, there it is, infuriate. So that's good news for us, because that saves us a ton of damage from the Kiln Fiend. Now, could you have picked up the bat? Yes, but it would have re-triggered, yeah. and I already made my land drop off of it, so I didn't want to lose okay. any value from it. I'm going to snap this right off now. See if they have another plus three, plus two. If so, they have to waste it on their own turn. Fantastic. Do I want a guiding voice? I think the answer is probably yes. See if they kind of just shock out our, our spirited companion here. Yep. Good, again, they're using it on the, our turn. Well, they, we lose a little bit of value on the learn portion of that, but I feel like we got value there from the fact that they had to shock and lose value there. So this is, could be potentially very bad for us. Opponent can tripping at the moment. See if they follow up with another can trip. Ancestral Anger, okay. Sounds good. This is very similar to my list. I'm not playing Dwarven Mine because I just think the price of a tap land is very high in that deck. It's about the worst draw we could have had. Um, I think I have to play Elementalist, unfortunately. I could I could have Synthesizer for a token. I think we'll just go cheap, so I can I can maximize my chances of double spelling. But I want to make my land drops. I will trade the the Elementalist for the for their combat step, basically, if if allowed. They may just kill off the Elementalist and attack me to death. It's extremely possible. But they have to keep in mind, if they don't win this turn, I do probably try to strangle out their Festival Crasher. Yep, they're going to give a Trample. So we only preserve one damage here, or one life here. So they win if they have any Pump Spell, basically. And we definitely are blocking to preserve as much of our life as we can. Okay. At five, what's in your hand then? Reckless Impulse, okay. Damage, huh? Okay, that's information. Hmm. Okay, let's strangle this. I think we're gonna synthesizer here. We make a we make a blocker. It is not susceptible to. Okay, this helps. I'll pick up the Forgotten Cave because I can now cycle it. I also have a blood to cycle any further lands I draw. The end the festivities does nothing other than one damage to our face, which is fine. I mean, it's not great, right? It puts us closer to three, which is kind of the bad spot for us to be. We need to find one of our Dawnbringer clerics. But we have Prophetic Prism that draws a card, Forgotten Cave that draws a card, Thrill that draws two, plus a blood token that we can cycle the land. We need time. So we got to figure out what we can do here. Okay, opponent needing to draw cards. They're shooting us for one. Puts Core Skyfisher in shock range. Another end the festivities is kind of gross as well. Yep, there's the shock on the Core Skyfisher. Still have a token though. I don't really care about that. I'm not so much worried about... I'm going to thrill away this Alpine Meadow. Again, Tapland is about the worst thing we can draw right now. But that's why we've designed the deck to try to get around the tap land problem, right? So let's cycle a blood token. And you can kind of see how like we're moving, right? We're moving through the deck. That helps. That helps. Play planes, play a prophetic prism, hold up frostbite slash cycle on forgotten cave. Get in for two with vigilance is our game plan at the moment. Okay, that helps. It's going to be a close one. We may have gotten ourselves through the through the worst of it here. Again, deal threes are just bad for us, right? If they're playing like uh, Skewer the Critics, that's trouble for us. There's our Dawnbringer Cleric. That's what we want. I think we'll lead on the Synthesizer just to see what that can generate for us. Of course, Skyfisher, pretty great. Let's play that. Pick up that synthesizer, see what it generates. 
So this is the interaction I was talking about with Synthesizer. So now it's, we're going to get another card because when it leaves the battlefield we get the ability again. So we make our land drop, get to play our Cleric. And we will gain two life. Go to combat. And we'll hold for now. Let's us hold up Frostbite. We, we're not going to thrill anything away in this hand, so we're basically just holding up Frostbite here on two mana. Opponent scoops him up. Awesome. Managed to managed to stop the Pendulum and push it back in the other direction. So that's exactly what this deck's trying to do. Itching for a longer game, trying to generate value over time. So I think it's fairly successful in that. Awesome. I'm not going to complain. Yeah, I get a fancy blue sun zenith. How fancy. Okay, let's keep it rolling. Give the people as many games as I can with this deck. While simultaneously not making the YouTube video so long, no one wants to watch it. <laughs> Stargate. We go first on an extremely slow hand, but I still think it's worth keeping. There's a lot of value here. A lot of cheap blockers. The, the scary the scary deck is the mass deck, but we do have Ray of Revelation in our hand to help, so I think that this is a fairly safe keep. <coughs> That's all you have to contribute? Yeah. Okay. Just joking. Understood. First time chatter. Oh my goodness, Quark of Dorothy. <laughs> Waiting for it, or are you hoping that it doesn't, or... I mean, I guess, is it that scary without Tron is the question, right? I think that without Tron, it's it's infinitely fair. So I think it would be a very cool card to help try to make uh, the mid-rangey decks a little bit better. I think we're going to get Ninja'd. I don't have any interaction for a Ninja. Light on a deck. Yes, this is a your kind of deck for sure. <laughs> this is, I would guess, the blue-red deck if I had to guess, just because that's a little bit more popular in your build. It could be mono-blue. It could be blue-white. It could be blue-something else. Okay, what can we do here? We want to Thraben. This Guiding Voice could help. Could guarantee us we make a land drop. I think we want to definitely Thraben, and what we want to do is strengthen up so they can't ninja attack us again without the flying possibility. So I think we're just going to run out all of the knuckleheads here. We can blood away this uh, Ray of Revelation now, and I think that's what we're going to do because it really doesn't have any validity in this matchup. I'm not going to attack with the Thraven because I do want to hold up multiple blockers to disincentivize that ninja attacking. If they were to like bounce something, which would be great for me in the long run, but in the short term it's going to put them up cards because the ninja is so good. We do need to find a core Skyfisher pretty quickly. I'm hoping that this Ray of Revelation cycle will help us out. Let's see how their scry goes. With my luck, both to the top. They're thinking about it, though. Both to the top, as predicted. Okay. We need, we need Core Skyfisher ASAP. I would also accept, um, I'd accept any flyer because of the guiding voice, which is why I'm not too keen to just use it right away, because I do want to try to make a flying blocker that can eat up these 1-1s. One That's blood. We're going to give them a bit of information, potentially. We could have land in our hand here. This card does flash back, so it's worth putting in our yard. So they don't know where I'm going. That's probably going to confuse them. Like, green? Okay, Mountain's a decent draw. Mountain, Mountain. I think we're going to throw away a Mountain. Thraben, Thrill. Uh, do we just want to crack Clue Token? I think we want to leave up mana to crack Clue Token. I might Thrill away that Thraben Inspector, because it's not going to do much in this matchup. And they're just going to... They're just going to ninja me out of this one if I don't do something quickly. So finding the cards is more important than generating the value from the creature. Do I love the concept? No, I'd rather get down things on board, but 
as you can see, it's just the flyers that are going to attack here. And again, I do think we're going to get ninja because we're in the world of eight ninjas. But this does have to. This does give them something to think about, right? Like, what if they have a removal spell for my ninja? Though a lot of these decks do tend to play the um, the flying counter spell. Did I forget the name of? Recast the series. What is that card called? Counters a spell if you have a counter. Counters a spell unless you pay two for two, and if you have a flyer, counters it unless they pay four. I think, or maybe it's one and four, something like that. It counters a spell, basically. My turn. We're gonna crack a clue. Prophetic prism is fine. That helps us flash back the ray. Should we elect to do so? I think we're just going to thrill. Again, if they want to counter this, that's not a big, big deal. Like, it's not the end of the world. Of course, Guy Fisher is good. That is a card we do not want to get countered. Um, What do we do here? The hacker won't be able to get back in. The ninja won't be able to get back in. So at this point, I mean, we're getting them down. We need to we need to get into a spot where we can successfully cast Course Guy Fisher. So... I think we don't necessarily want to prism. Hmm, this is a tricky one. I think we're just going to Thraven and generate another clue and then crack another clue at the end of turn. I think is our best bet here. They definitely have some piece of interaction, right? It keeps pausing there. Um, no attacks, obviously. Ninja, the deep hours, kills anything on our board. Our powers and our ability to double block. So opponent's six cards to R3, which is a potential four. So they're going to attack again. We'll see if they... Whoa. I want to block like that. We'll see what they have for me. Look, they might just be one of wanting to whittle down our board. We can't afford to let them pick a, like a, the hacker back up. That's very good. Our lack of removal that we're hitting is uh, not helping us. They've gone shields down on a blocker, though, which is really good news for us. So you have to recast the Fairy Seer here. So they're fully shields down. <laughs> if we can draw a removal spell, this would be the turn to do it. Um, I'm not sure what the best target would be at this point. The, obviously, the Moon the Moonblade Shinobi is good, but we have that kind of checked on board. So it's actually like a really interesting question as to what do we do. We haven't drawn a removal spell yet, so the, the elemental is not at its best. I think we'll lead on synthesizer and see if we get a land. We do not. Okay. So core skyfisher will pick up the synthesizer. do get a removal spell fantastic now the question is what do we kill i think it's probably miscreant they do keep scrying with the seer but if they get a second miscreant that's really bad for us the ability to keep picking those up and putting them back down and drawing a card when they do it is ridiculous and we do have the uh the shinobi checked on the ground so now they're completely shut off until they have some piece of interaction they have five cards in hand and i know they're holding at least a counter spell we're going to bind our monster. Got it, got it. That's not too bad for us. We'll see how hard we get hit here. The Moon, the moon, bla the moon Blade Shinobi is basically dealt with. What they're trying to do now is use a lot of little flyers to close the game out. So we do need to uh, find another core Skyfisher or more removal. And we do have to keep in mind that they are going to go shields down. So we have the Ray of Revelation... So I'm going to start with Prophetic Prism and see if that eats out their counter spell. I think that's probably best. Maybe I synthesize her first. No, let's go ahead and do this. Okay, they let it resolve. Dawnbringer Cleric's pretty good. Uh, we can do that at instant speed, though. So let's go ahead and companion. See if they counter this. Make disappear. I 
guess while they're going shields down, destroy the spine of the monster. Are you playing Spell Pierce? They are? Yes. Okay. Not a big deal. We have the Dawnbringer Cleric that can do all this work, so we got to clear out some cards from their hand. We have the Ardent Elementalist now for our Strangle. While it's not the best thing against them, maybe I need to play a Singleton and the Festivities for this deck specifically. I don't want to fill the deck with Silver Bullets because this deck does draw well. Like, I just want to point out we've drawn more cards than our Ninja opponent, but it doesn't. it's not as efficient as all of that. Two to bottom. Okay. Frostbite helps. We're going to start with Dawnbringer Cleric. That's just insta resolved. Okay. Do we want a synthesizer? No, I think we just hold. We have crew, Clue Crack as well as Frostbite here end of turn. And the onus is kind of on them to smack us. So two damage would come in, so this would put us to four. It's not three damage? Uh, I'm assuming they have a ninja, but it just went right to damage, so. We're going to try to frostbite out a fairy seer, and we do. <clears throat> Puts us to three. Firing Overseer is a nice draw. It's going to cast that bad boy. And we're going to Guiding Voice put a counter on it. I think we're going to Environmental Sciences because we need the life. And we'll grab the planes. Okay. I don't want to jinx us, but we're getting very close to stabilizing. They're on the mono blue variant, it looks like. I haven't seen any mountains. I haven't seen any... Uh, I don't see snow covered for Frostbite. So it looks like they're on the mono blue version of this ninja's deck. This is exactly... This is very similar to something I have in my... In my to-build list... I just don't have Ninja of the Deep Hours. Looks like they're going to go for another bind on our Core Sky Fisher. Which doesn't change our plans too much. It's We're still hunting for more Core Sky Fishers because it's one of the best cards in this matchup. Looks like they're going to shove to just get any damage they can through. In case there's a trick, I guess I'll give them the opportunity. I'll just might as well just block everything on here. That way, if they have a ninja, they have to pick up their token. Dawnbringer Cleric is a high value target for them to get rid of because the fact I can core skyfisher the Dawnbringer Cleric and gain more life or destroy the other bind the monster. Okay, they're gonna bounce something. Glad I quad blocked. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, this is very close to a deck I was putting together. Very neat to see it play out. It's a very fair match again. And again on the YouTubes, let us know if you enjoy this kind of thing. We love poppers, so let us know if you want to see these kind of like deck brews. Normally we bring it to you in a pop-up video style format, but it was it just happened to I jumped on to record a video and it happened to be popper, so just like can't not take the opportunity so i figured try it in this little bit looser of a format let me know what you think about it for sure definitely interested to see what people's <clears throat> thoughts are on it so let us know in the comments. Or if you're out there on the chat, let us know what you think. I mean, obviously can't change much. This is how we stream. 
But if it sucks, it could be, it just hurt our feelings. All right, there we go. So that will do it for the YouTube video for this deck. So let us know again what you think. Appreciate everybody hanging out with us for the YouTube portion of this. We are always live on our Twitch channel on Sunday evenings, 8 o'clock Eastern time. You can catch us there. We play Limited. We play Pauper. You can redeem your channel points to play us in the Pauper. If you want to play us in Pauper, let us know. We have a Discord you can join. We do try to support Pauper as much as we can when we have time. So it's, it's a work in progress. But let us know if you want to see more Pauper in there as well. That'll kick us in the butt. And that's what we need sometimes. I think that's what we all need sometimes. So that'll do it for me and for Sam. So until next time, you got to cast more spells. That's what I say at the end of these. Bye.